Hey guys, today we're gonna be beating some very difficult content that a lot of you guys have been asking me to do. I've heard there's not really a guide out yet, so I figured I would be the first. And that is with the new Treasures of the Deep stages, aka the Reeve event um, that is going on right now. You get a lot of rewards. Um, and in challenge mode, which is the quote unquote hard version, you get about 100 gems per stage, and you get these types of uh, relic things, which you can use uh, to buy things in the shop. And I beat the this stage right here, um, hard eight, and it's honestly really, really hard. It's probably endgame content, I would say, is what it qualifies as. So I tried to make a team that I think is reasonable um, to beat, to beat it, and um, I'm going to be going over that with you guys now, just to kind of help you out. Um, the same kind of premise that I will be using can be used for 6, 7, and 8, which are all the hard ones. Um, as you can see, I leaked a little bit on this one, and I just didn't feel like redoing it. Um, I did it all on stream if you want to watch the process, but for the most part, um, let's just go in and see the kind of units people are using. Um, I do have to preface this by saying my Razak is not leveled, or I would use him. Um, but this is the people things people are using. They're using like Boreas, Gone, etc., etc. Um, they're using Legendary Lord, Legendary Lord, Legendary Lord, Legendary Lord, Legendary Lord times two. Uh, no Legendary Lords, but using all this stuff. This is kind of on similar level of what I'm doing, but I'm heavily leaning on Silas and not so much anyone else. Um, so let's just go go into the team. Enough stalling. This is the team I will be using. Um, I know it looks bad, but I have to explain it really quickly. Number one, Hex barely gets used. You could take him out, replace him with any single target DPS, and you'll be fine. I could use probably, um, but I do have to preface, sorry, by saying you need to have kind of the typical range of a marksman. Okay, um, so kind of this type of range is pretty important because uh, if you don't have it, you will die. Or you could use something like Razak, Nyx, Pelagius, etc, etc. Um, Razak is actually buffed, although he isn't leveled for me. Otherwise, I would level him. Um, he's right here. I, I pulled another one during the event. It kind of bothers me, but that's besides the point. Uh, moving on, though, we got Silas is going to be the main MVP. You want to build him with Infernal Roar. Uh, I know the builds look really good and stuff. And sure, that's okay. Like, that's a, an okay complaint to have. But this is like really, really hard content. Uh, this is actually, I think, worse than a max spirit siphon or like a close to max spirit siphon for Silas on this stage. But I just don't feel like swapping it out. X has decent gear, although his attack is abysmal. If you just like sacrifice over 100% crit damage and you put just like closer to 8,000, 8,000, uh, 8, sorry, um, attack, you're going to be fine. Um... Then we're using Hatsit. Hatsit is purely for the left side. If I had Razak, I would just use Razak for the left side. So if you don't have Hatsit, although she did have a rate up banner recently, uh, just use Razak in the spot that I am using her and you're going to be A-OK. -okay. It's probably even better than using Ra Hatsit. But Hatsit has a curse set right here. Um, stats are nothing too, too crazy. Um, and then Idril's Gaze. Idril's Gaze is the best because she has naturally low like attack and penetration. Um, Hollow, you want Invig ideally, and you want to build her for healing. So you want to build her high attack speed, high attack, and a little bit of healing effect and rage regen if you can. Uh, if you, Euphoric Orb for me did about nothing, so you could use something else like a Scarab or whatever. Um, next we have three tanks. Um, I would recommend three tanks, uh, just for the three lanes, though we will only be needing two place down for a while. Um, Soul Day is just there for the Lord bonus and a little bit of tankiness. She will be on the lane where she's not taking as much damage as the others. Rukir, I'm only using him because he's a Northerner tank. You could use Regulus, you could use Baron, you could use Uset, you know, all this stuff. Uh, Olog, I'm also using, you know, the gear has to be decent. It's designed for endgame players. Um, so if your gear isn't good enough, that's okay. Nocturne, um, will be for the right side. He does a lot better than Hex. I used Hex on my original clear, but I also used Araka, um, so I'm not doing that. Um, Lunario is also just for the Lord bonus. We need her for the extra range for Silas, and also to buff Silas, who is the main MVP.
Before we get to the rest of the video, I do have to say I put a lot of work into these. Um, lately, I haven't really been editing too much because I've been focusing more on developing these strategies for the new content, and it takes up a lot of time. You have no idea. Um, so if you would like to support me, the best way to do it is to like and subscribe. Um, I know all the YouTubers say it, but it really, really, really does help. You, you have no idea how much. Um, so if you do want to support me, that's the best way to do it. Also, turn on the bell, because my, the, the ratio of people who have the bell on is really, really, really bad for my channel. Uh, so please do that if you would like. But let's, enough wasting time, let's get back to the video. Um, but you can change up the team however you see fit. Uh, instead of Hex, you can use Vierna. As long as they have that sort of range and they deal damage, uh, you're fine. It's just Hex worked the best for me, even though he does practically nothing. Um, anyways, so we're going to start it off with Silas facing left. You want the Lunaria range so that he can actually reach this tile over here, which is where a lot of the enemies are going to get blocked. And then you want to place Hollow here specifically. It has to be here. Um, I would recommend Hollow over any other healer in the game, um, purely for the rage regen and also the range. So Elowen doesn't work here. Um, and the reason why we put her on this tile is because if you put her in front, the boss that's going to come out will actually kill her. Um, I don't know when or why, because it's not really a visual indicator, uh, indicator, but, but it just happens. So you have to plan accordingly. And then you want to place your best tank here. I'm going to place Procure because he is the best tank I have. You could do something like Gone. You could do Olag if you need. You could do cars you could do etc etc it's a tank tanks are very easy to build and to play around um you could use regulus as well because of his high base stats next we're going to do our other tank you want your second strongest tank there and then you're going to place your your next healer here i recommend vortex because when we place hats here once again you could use uh razak and razak is actually better um you could place them here facing up. You want to face up in order to deal with the Rainmakers or whatever they're called. Um, those are kind of the biggest threats alongside the people coming over here. There's a lot of threats in this stage, okay? Uh, but Hatsu is someone who I do recommend purely because she can do this to the mages. Uh, this is because of the Idril's Gaze, by the way, which is pretty important. And then, sorry, there's a lot of things to keep track of, but that's just how the stage works. Around when these, these guys right here come to around this vicinity i like to do my silas ult now and then every time you silas ult you want to do a hollow ult um and then immediately after when we get a chance the cost i mean uh we're gonna place a soul day right here so we're just gonna have her there to tank these guys right here if your silas is strong enough you don't actually need her because he will kill everyone but assuming your silas is weaker than mine you're gonna be a-okay Hatsa, in the meantime, will be attacking there. And as soon as we get enough cost for Nocturne, Hex is trash over here, so that's why I'm not using him. Uh, we're going to place Nocturne over there. Uh, and then we should be fine for a while. If you want to sell Isolde, you can. It doesn't really make a big difference. If you use someone other than Hex, uh, then you could take out Isolde, maybe put them down. I don't know. Uh, but it's up to you. Then we're going to have Nocturne over here. My Nocturne is not skilled at all, so if your Nocturne is weaker than mine, or he's not A1, just skilling your Nocturne will make a world of difference and probably even be better than mine. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I should have Silas ulted a while ago. That's on me. I kind of forgot. But you want Silas to kill the main middle guys right here, uh, as they will make him do less damage if you leave them. So it's very important that you clear them. Uh, when the mages come out on the left, you always want to be uh, Hatsu ulting or Razak ulting when they get into range, um, whatever works. Uh, with Nocturne, you just want him in one ult or to kill uh, both of the guys on the right. Otherwise, he will die when the third one comes out. If there's two of them out at the same time, he will die. Just straight up, he'll, he'll just instantly die from that. So it's pretty important to uh, realize that like kind of uh, learn the timing to get them both dead in one alt. And now when the third one comes out, you can kind of just alt with him, get them dead. And then the second they die, you can pull Nocturne, put Hex or whoever has similar range in the same spot, and then you should hopefully be okay. Now Hatsit, we're going to trigger the alt over there. Nocturne's going to kill that guy. Now we can pull him. And now we can put Hex 
Hex is only for clearing the people right here above Rokir. He's only to help with that. When when I cleared it with him doing this, uh, he did damage to one single enemy because he keeps locking onto the boss who takes no damage from magic damage. Um, and he ended up doing practically nothing and being completely useless. So uh, you could probably swap him out with anything, honestly, and you'll, you'd be fine. <laughs> Uh, but the main threat of the stage is just these big guys that are coming out. So on the left, we also need to be mindful of Hatsit. The reason why we haven't pulled her yet, because no mages are coming out, is so that she's actually able to deal a bit of damage to this big fat guy, who is, once again, going to be the biggest threat that we have. Um, but yeah, so also you got to be very, very mindful. Triggering Hatsit ult, once again. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of information that you got you to gotta process here. But... Uh, we're going to trigger Style Assault pretty fast, and you always have to be careful of your tanks, so you always have to be triggering their ults when they're about to die. Uh, but we have a little bit of downtime here. Hex actually killed some guy, which is a miracle. He generally will lock onto the boss and do absolutely nothing. Um, it's pretty RNG. I think Vierna would actually be better, but I didn't bring her, because you don't really need AoE mages. Boreas actually would be better, because he has um, his AoE thing. Um, and here we're going to be triggering this, hats it once again on the left, dealing with the big guys, at least dealing a bit of damage to them, is pretty nice. I didn't need the vortex ult there, that was kind of a misclick, but, um, now that hats it can't hit anyone, we're gonna pull her, and then we're gonna put someone here, we're gonna trigger Brokir ult, because he's about to die. Luckily, Brokir is very tanky, so I'm not too worried about him, but... Uh, we're about to be triggering his unyielding very soon because I don't expect him to live for a little while. Next, we're going to have uh, whatever it is. Uh, Hex ult. Brokir's about to die, but we can trigger Nocturne to hopefully do a bit more damage, although his ult is attacking the boss, so he's not really doing much. Uh, but as you can see here, um, even if Nocturne died there because he got hit pretty hard, we would have lived because Brokir is so tanky. Once again, Regulus works just fine. I think maybe something like Baron might work, but you will have to have really good tank gear. Um, and now that everyone is dead, we could just kill the boss. Uh, something to note about the boss is if you can't kill all his split parts, he will assemble. But the next time you kill them, which is right now, he will just instantly die without splitting again. Um, but if you're able to kill all the split sides, the boss will be dead forever. But because of the way we placed everyone and we strategized, we don't actually need to kill the boss until the end. The only threat is the really, really big guys. And uh, the main issue of the stage is honestly just separating um, yourself into equal parts. And what I mean by that is having people off on the left, on the right, and in the middle doing all the damage. Obviously, Silas is doing the best because he's bonded, but you could use Boreas instead. Um, you could use some other stuff, but like most teams I saw are using stuff like Praetus, um, which is ridiculous. So if you have a bonded Silas, you could do it this way. There are a lot of substitutes to everything but bonded Silas. Uh, it's the best I could do. I know it is kind of rough having one hero be hero dependent, but there are a lot of ways to do the stage. You just need to keep tinkering. And I'm ho I hope that the tips I give are worthwhile. Um, although, I will say, as long as you have something for the left, like Radzak, Hatsa, you could use Brienne. I did use Brienne. I got like 90% of the way done. She barely didn't cut it, but if you have better gear than I do, you can use Brienne on the left and she will be fine. On the right, I do recommend Nocturne. He is the one who, you who was the best for me. Uh, you could use Silas there if you're using someone else over the middle, but whatever um hex also works but his timing is really rough and i hated using him so that's why i use nocturne instead and then for the middle you just use a bunch of tanks you could use some dps in the middle but you do want them to live ideally and then the healers can differ i know elowen is really strong here um but i prefer the way that i did it so if you do have some units that uh work for this um i hope this helped if you don't i hope this was at least uh some decent advice and hopefully my explanations will let you beat 6 to 8. They're all pretty much the same. And yeah, uh, that's about it for me. I am I really enjoyed going through the Treasures of the Deep on stream. Honestly, it was a really, like, a large amount of fun. Um, the Redeem Shop kind of sucks, though. It's four, four summons, 
and some stuff that's trash. I mean, half of us don't even have Reeve, despite it being his event. And this is barely any gems. And one ancient. Like, are you kidding me? These we we need to have better better rewards for these things. But ranting aside, I hope this helped. And uh make sure to like and subscribe if you would like. And uh Destin signing out.